Y'all, I have officially upgraded in life. Today, I got microphones. Y'all, this is pretty upscale. So, good evening. Tonight, we have Bible study. So, today's Bible study is coming for 1 Timothy 5 and 8, and I'm reading from the NLT version. And this Bible study is going to be pretty short, but it's really going to get to the point. So, without further ado, let's get into the scripture. Now, you're probably thinking, who wrote 1 Timothy? And out of all the disciples, it was Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was a disciple of Jesus Christ. And whenever he had his revelation and testimony, he was full fledged for the Lord. And he wrote this particular book, 1 Timothy, for Timothy to stay in Ephesus and prevent false teachings of the law by others. For 1 Timothy 5 and 8, I will be reading from the NLT version and from the King James version. So the King James version says, but if any provide not for his own, and specifically for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And then in the NLC version, it says, but those who won't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. Let's get into it. Y'all, the devil is busy. But my God works even harder. So I have these little microphones that I got from TikTok, right? I start using them for the video. And what's weird is whenever I'm recording, it sounds okay. Whenever I stop recording and save the video, I hear muffles. In the microphone, and it's not like just like technical difficulty muffles, but it's like whispering muffles. And then on top of that, I know I fully charged my TikTok. My TikTok light right goes out out of nowhere twice. In conclusion, I'm starting everything over. And I know it's just because the devil wants to make me irritated right now. But just know I just stumped on your head. So let's get back to programming. Reading 1 Timothy 5 and 8 from the King James Version and from the NLT Version. So the King James Version says, But if any provide not for his own and specifically for those of his own house, he has to deny the faith and is worse than an infidel. And then in the NLT Version it says, but those who won't care for their relatives, especially those in their own house, has denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. Let's get into it. In James Version, Paul emphasizes the pronoun he. So this is definitely meant for a man to know because if a man does not lead the house, then his house will not be in order. If a man does not lead his house, then the house won't be in order. And if a man doesn't lead his house spiritually through God, it definitely won't be in order. So whenever Paul is saying, if any provide not for his own house and specifically for his own, he has denied the faith. The moment that his house is not in order, it affects the household. And it's like a downhill spiral. Because if the father doesn't believe, then the mother won't. If the mother doesn't believe, then the children won't. And this goes into their teachings. This goes into the way they're raised and the way they believe in God. Of this verse, it says, but if any provide not for his own. So providing is not just financial. It is also spiritual. It is also mental. It is also emotional. And as long as those characteristics are carried from the head of the household, which is supposed to be the man, then everything else will follow. When it doesn't, it's out of order. So if the mother is leading instead of the husband, it's out of order. We see it in today. Or if the father is not there at all, then it is out of order and it still affects the children. But as long as the father or the man is the masculine example in the household or an example period of providing in those aspects, then it will make a drastic difference than if any other person was to do it in the house. In the last part of this verse, it says he has denied the faith 
and is worse than an infidel or in the NLT version, worse than an unbeliever. This is important to emphasize because it's one thing to not be a believer of Christ, someone that gave their life for you, someone that took away your sins if you fully gave yourself to God, right? But for you to bring life into this world and not provide for it, you are worse than a person who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. And a person that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, they have the free will and they have that choice to go to hell because at that point, you don't want to worship God. You don't want to be in fellowship with God, which that's what heaven is. And that's where hell is the opposite. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, that's one thing and you're choosing to go to hell. But if you Definitely don't take care of your children. Don't take care of your family. Don't take care of your household. You're worse off than those people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. And that's the gateway to get to heaven. So why would you bring life into this world and not provide for it? Again, it's not just financial. It's spiritually. It's emotionally. It's mentally. You are bringing in a legacy and you're not providing for it. You're bringing in a legacy that's going to affect the world. That's going to affect this community. That's going to affect society. And you're not providing for it. That should irritate you to some degree. Because that is selfish. And whenever you do selfish acts. It affects people around you. Like your family. This Bible study was really short today. But God put this on my heart. For me to emphasize that. We are living in a society where this example is shown least more than ever in time. And the only reason why it's just as bad as it is, is because it's starting to be a trend. It's starting to be okay. And no one is really holding people accountable. You shouldn't be okay Hanging around people that don't take care of their family or not trying to provide for their family. Because if you're hanging around those type of people, you're telling those people it's okay to do what they're doing. And as Christians, it's not judging, but it's giving you criticism, spiritual criticism to hold you accountable and do better. Because once you know better, you do better. Broken homes should not be glorified. Just because we are flesh in nature and we are sexual be beings in nature doesn't make it right for us to go against God when it comes to our sexual desires and bringing life into this world broken. It's a reason why it's important to be married before you have children because it's order. It's a reason why you need to be spiritually in tune with God before you spiritually in tune with somebody else because it's in order it's a reason why your children need both parents in the household because it's spiritually in order so when it's messed up there's going to be consequences for that spiritually and then mentally and then physically a part of being in a relationship with God is to deny your flesh and give it all to God because the moment you do the opposite and you put your flesh over God your flesh now becomes your idol and then it becomes your downfall and then it opens up doors for sin and the wages of sin are death so to prevent you from sinning from downfalling from making things your idol you should seek God first and be consistent because this is the way to heaven. You don't sin just because you're trying to get by. You don't sin because you love God so much. And when it comes to 1 Timothy 5 and 8, this is important because as long as you have your house in order, other things fall in line and is in alignment with God.